Hello, my name is Michael Smith, and today we're going to demonstrate uh, making a gas giant with procedural textures in Blender. Particularly, we're going to focus on how do you make those whorls the, the eye of the storm. So to do that, we're going to start with general. We're going to select our default cube, press delete to get rid of it. We're going to add mesh icosphere. I'm going to click down here, uh, and we're going to change the size to make it a bit bigger. And then we're also going to change the subdivisions to make it a bit smoother. Great. Right click on it, shade smooth so that the shading is nice. And there we have our planet. I'm also going to go ahead and get rid of the light and replace it with a sun. But let's do that in shading. Okay, so we're going to remove the background light because this is space. We're going to delete this default light and we're going to do add light sun. R for rotate, Y, R for rotate, X, R for rotate, Z. And there we go. That looks kind of like a planet profile. Okay, great. So let's go back to our viewport shading here in the top left so that we can see what we're doing. I'm going to select the sphere, do a new texture, and let's get to it. So the first thing we want to do is add this, this banding. I'm going to go with Neptune. So we want this sort of dark blue uh, to lighter blue with a little bit of white mixed in banding around the, the sphere. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Add Texture, and we'll start with the Noise Texture. And then the problem with the noise texture is that it's not banded ar around horizontally. It's evenly distributed. So the way we're going to deal with that is add input texture coordinates. And then we're going to scale those uh, along the z-axis so that we can squish it. And the way we're going to do that is add vector math. So we're going to take the generated coordinates. We're going to do multiply. And then in, if we just multiply by 1, 1, 1, of course, what we get are exactly the same coordinates as we have now. No change. Um, but if we scale the z-axis like this, what we're effectively doing is where before generated, if you remember, goes from 0, 0, at the bo 0, 0, 0 bottom corner to 1, 1, 1 top corner of the bounding box. So the z here would go from 0 to 1. It's now going from 0 to 3 and a half. And so what that effectively does is squish the texture, right? Because what was at 1 is now you know down here somewhere. And so we're just going to scale that a bit more. And then I'm going to reduce the scale of this texture so we get that nice light banding. And then to get the color, we're going to add converter color ramp to go from a uh, gray uh, uh, scale texture to the colors that we want. And we're going to get uh, add a point in there with a plus. And we're going to go ahead and do some blue colors. Make that a little darker and then just a bit of intense white. And we'll take a look at that in the rendered mode just to see how that's looking. I'm going to change the material properties. Obviously, your planet isn't going to be shiny like this. So we're going to increase the roughness. That looks a bit better. And yeah, that looks pretty good. OK, so now what we want to do I'm going to go back to this view. We want to add the whorls in. And so there are a bunch of ways to do this, but I'll show you the easiest one. We're going to add texture, Voronoi texture. And what this is going to do, if you remember, I'll plug in the color output, is it creates this sort of irregular grid. And it does that by this randomization vector. So if you move the randomization to 0, you get effectively a, a 3D grid. If you move it up a bit, what it does is, is fiddle with those edges so you get this more regular grid. Another output this has is distance. And that's the one we're going to use. What this does is measure the distance from the center of each of those cells. And so what each of these cells are going to make essentially a little storm eye on our planet. And so two things we want to do. Uh, one, we don't want all of these. This is, this is too many. Uh, so we want to filter them. The way we're going to do that is we're going to add converter color ramp. And we're going to switch that from linear to constant. And this is going to create a mask that allows us to just select some of them. And the way we're going to select them is we're going to take the color, which is a different value for each of the cells. We're going to use that to pick some of them. And then we're going to merge that back in here with add color mix RGB. So we can use that as a mask. So we're going to go uh, where this is 0 or black. It's going to select the output of distance. And where it's not 0, it's going to make it uh, white. So let's select less of those. 
Okay, that's pretty good. The second thing I want to do is we don't want our storm to have, you know, these square edges. So I actually want to trim the distance uh, so that, excuse me, it stops before it gets to the edges. So we're going to do add converter color ramp again. And what we're going to do is just dial this back until these are more in the center. The other thing I'm gonna do, I don't see any examples of this here, but um, with this randomness, you know, if I put it all the way here, and maybe that's why I dialed it back a bit, you can get cells where the, the center is right near the edge. Uh, and so you get these straight lines anyway. This one's not really that much. If, if we dialed this back a bit, it would go away. Um, but just to avoid that, a little less randomness tends to keep that, that center actually in the center. So there we go. I'm going to filter out a few more of these. So we really just have a few. Perfect. And now we're going to mix that into the coordinate system. So add back in this color. This is without the vortices. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to do an add converter, uh, sorry, color, mix RGB, and we're going to use multiply, not mix. And so what that means is that the, the closer we are to the center, of one of these cells, uh, the coordinate system will be multiplied by effectively 0, 0, 0. So what we'll get is a point that's 0, 0, 0. And as we go out to the edge where this is white, we're going to multiply the coordinate system by 1, 1, 1. So it'll just be the normal value of the coordinate system. So if we plug that in, what you're going to see are these nice whorls. Uh, and so what's happening is where the, again, near the center, this is being dominated because we're multiplying by the zero, zero, zero value. And where uh, it goes out towards the edges, it starts uh, converting back into the coordinate system that's just normal. And this creates these bands because uh, when you're going from zero, zero, zero out towards the edge, let's say you just use this as the coordinate system. Effectively, you're going from zero, zero, zero to one, one, one. So you're, you're drawing a straight line from the bottom left corner of this texture, if you will, all the way to the, the top right, right? Zero, 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 one, one, one across this bounding box. And that value is the same all the way around the ring, right? Because the distance is the same from the center all around the ring. And so what that creates are these concentric rings. And then as it switches to where the actual coordinates are more dominating what's going on towards the edges, uh, then what's going to happen, uh, you know, because we're multiplying by 1, 1, 1, which gives you just the original coordinate, you get back to the, the normal coordinates. And we can play with this a bit and you'll see, you know, depending on how you apply it, you get more or less of an effect. Um, the other thing we're going to do uh, just for fun is flatten these out a bit. If you've looked at, you know, actual uh, Neptune, these aren't exactly circular. They're a bit more oblong. And so to do that, we're just going to do the same thing we did over here uh, to the banding. Uh, except a little less pronounced. So we'll multiply the coordinate system and flatten it out along the z-axis. So not, not that much, obviously. But like a little more than one. And then maybe that's probably a, a few too many storms. Maybe we make the, the scale a bit larger here. And there you go. Uh, and so if we look at this in rendered mode, oh, from the area where we have the sun, there you go. You got your gas giant and you've got your worlds. You can also use this technique to create things like knots in wood uh, or other things if you want them to be procedural. You can also drive this, this uh, technique off of an actual texture, like a, a, a painted texture, if you want to control where these are, right? So if you if you paint white blobs on, on a UV map, uh, you can also use those to create this effect. Uh, you can also use a distance from like an empty. There's a whole bunch of different ways you, you can create this. Um, but if you just want random whorls in your texture, uh, you can use the Veronoi texture to drive that. So I hope you learned something. Thanks.